All right, in this last lesson, we're going to take a look at our other method for so solving non-right angle triangles, which is called the cosine law. So remember that for a sine law, the only requirement was that we have to know a side length and an angle opposite. If we do not have that information, we're going to need to use what is called the cosine law. So for the cosine law, and I'm not going to take you through how the proof works in this case, but for any triangle ABC where A, B, and C are lengths opposite, angles A, angle B, and angle C, then the sine law states that side length C squared is going to equal the other two side lengths squared and added together minus 2 times the other two side lengths times cos of angle C. We can replace any of the side lengths for this. For A, it's still going to be the other two side lengths squared and added together minus 2 times the other two side lengths times cos of, in this case, angle A, or the angle opposite the side length that I'm solving. The same thing would be true for B. The formula can also be rearranged to isolate the angle, or cos of the angle. Cos of the angle is going to equal the other two side lengths squared and added together minus the side length opposite squared, and that's going to be the key piece in there, divided by two times the other two side lengths. So, for example one, Nina wants to find the distance between two points A and B on opposite sides of a pond. She locates a point C that is 35.5 meters from A and 48.8 meters from B. If the angle at C is 54 degrees, determine the distance from A to B or the length across the pond. So I could have my pond be here and I'm going to label that I have point A, I have point B, and we created a point C back here. And now I have my triangle. I know that this angle is going to be 54 degrees, from C to A is going to be 35.5 meters, and from C to B is going to be 48.8 meters. What I'm trying to solve is side length C. So from the formulas that we know at the top, we know that side length C squared is going to equal the other two side lengths squared and add together, so 35.5 squared plus 48.8 squared minus 2 times the other two side lengths, 35.5 times 48.8 times cos of angle C, which is 54 degrees. C squared is going to equal 1605.13 and then I need to take the square root of both sides. Side length C is going to be to the nearest tenth 40.1 meters. For example 2 it wants us to solve this triangle where I have A and B I know and angle C I know. So I'm going to draw out my triangle. I'm going to call it A, B, C. Side length A is going to be opposite A. 
side length B is going to be opposite B, and we know angle C is 33.6 degrees. Now I'm going to solve for what side length C is. I'm going to do it the same way that I did in the last case. C squared is going to equal 7 squared plus 9 squared minus 2 times 7 times 9 times cos of 33.6 degrees. C squared is going to equal 77.526 and then when I square root both sides C is going to equal the square root of 77.526 or to the nearest tenth 8.8. Now I could use my sine law to solve the other sides or the other angles, but I'm going to use my cos law in order to solve these angles just to make sure that we know how to do it. So I'm going to use the cos law to solve for angle B down here. And I'm going to say that cos of angle B is going to equal the other two side lengths squared and added together. So 9 squared and 8.8 .8 squared. I'm going to subtract the opposite side length squared minus 7 squared and I'm going to divide that by 2 times the other two side lengths, 9 and 8.8. .8. Which means that cos of angle B is going to equal 0 0.6909 or angle B is going to equal cos to the negative 1 of 0 0.6909. That's going to give me 46.3 to the nearest tenth. And for angle A, I'm going to keep it simple. I'm just going to say that angle A is going to equal 180 minus my other two side lengths, 33.6 and minus 46.3. Angle A inside here is going to be 100.1 degrees. And that's it for trigonometry. So, remember, with cosine law, you can use cosine law if you know two side lengths and the angle between them. Or you can use sine law to find an angle if you know all three angles. In all of the cases, you're going to use the sign law.